Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to replace my blown downpipe hanger. Welcome back and thanks for being here. I decided I wanted to work on my repertoire of places to film so that I wasn't getting too trite. Let's try something weird. I'm going to record right here under the car. <laughs> so, uh, Without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. I'll talk as I work and we'll see how this piece is together. In a previous video, I had shared uh, information with you about these uh, bonding straps. Uh, I'm not going to explain it again in this video, but I will say that I am going to do something a little different with this. Uh, bonding straps are best kept short and I have come up with a shorter solution. I'm just not ready to, uh, to replace this yet. Instead, I'm going to go straight for the uh, downpipe hanger. Now what you see here is uh, the ECS tunnel brace slash skid plate bracket. This will probably not be on your car unless you have the, uh, the tunnel brace. When I first noticed this blown mount here I had speculated that um, that there was undue pressure on this mount and that that's what caused it to, to blow out prematurely. And a lot of folks in a, uh, the MQB Facebook group had mentioned that, no, this is normal. They, they just blow out and they basically wrote off that my car's got 100,000 miles on it. It's, it's bound to happen. But then why didn't this one blow? I thought that something there was something going on here with the pressure being put on this. And it turned out that I might be right about that. I didn't notice it, but I was looking back. It was when I was providing some... Uh, photographs I think from my transmission drain video and I noticed that that this mount appeared to be crooked when it was first put in so I don't know if there is a fitment issue with the uh, the APR downpipe or if perhaps my installer didn't put enough attention into getting it in straight We'll find out in a minute when I take this out. Now taking it out isn't going to be a terrible problem. It's when I put it back in is when I'm going to find out if I've got an alignment problem. So as I was reviewing whether or not I was going to have any trouble getting this out, and I don't think I am, um, I was watching a ShopDap video, and in their case they actually were installing a downpipe. And so the downpipe was not connected at the engine, which made it easier to take these two bolts out and pull everything away. And the downpipe and everything move with it. I'm not disconnecting my downpipe. So if I had a factor downpipe, it would be more difficult. Obviously, these bolts are going to just come right out. But the whole downpipe and everything needs to push back in order to get this out, you know, out of its, you know, get these... Uh, uh, mounting pegs out of the slots. Thankfully with the APR downpipe that is not going to be a problem because I'm going to remove this which will then free this bracket from the downpipe and then I'll be able to remove these two bolts and the whole thing will just slide straight down. So check this out. And something I'll point out here is this clearance is so tight that a, a socket wrench isn't going to fit right here. So you probably will need, um, I'll probably need to go get uh, an, an, a U-joint elbow type of piece to fit in here so that I can get my wrench down here and out of the way. It is not coming out as easily as I hoped. I hope it's not cross-threaded. Now I can see there's a lot of tension on this. And so odds are pretty fair that the installer just couldn't really get it lined up. Well, I don't know. He might have been able to. But I, I can see I'm at a limit. I'll show you when I get this wrench out of here. Oh man, there's a nut on the back of there. No wonder it isn't coming out. I thought that might be threaded. That'd have been nice.
This is the part that I knew was going to be easy. I thought this would be easy, but it's, uh, it's kind of not. All right, so here's the ECS bracket. This is what I thought caused my premature, premature wear. Uh, but I don't think it did now. And now that I have this, I can get a tool on the back of that. So uh, let's get a wrench back there. Tool organization is very important. I lack that discipline and so then you have to search for tools when you need them. All right, that is easier. A little bit of rust on that. That might have been what gave me trouble. Just a little bit, maybe, I don't know. Now, what I thought I'd be able to show you is this. I don't know that there's enough of a uh, of a cut if it doesn't go up high enough. I don't know if it's worth it for me to uh, to file that to make it a little bit longer to get it up higher. I'm going to go with no and just put the replacement in and deal with it. Now that I will document it, I'll keep an eye on it and I'll figure out how long each each of these brackets last. It's a $32 piece and so uh, I think I might be able to live with it. We'll see. So let's go ahead and just replace it and move on. The trick here, and I'm going to have to get out from under the car to do this. This, um, I don't think it pulls off very easily. Well, maybe it does. It pulls out of the blown one, that's for sure. Yeah, from under the car, I don't have enough leverage to get behind it and, and pull it out. So I'm going to assemble this um, outside from under the car. I'll be back. All right, that wasn't too awful. I just got a mallet and uh, a rubber mallet and just kind of beat it in there. I, I didn't want to lube it up because sometimes lubed um, bushings can squeak. And uh, I know there's lube out there that prevents that, but I don't, I don't have it. So if I just shove that in there to try to line it up, you can see that it doesn't quite want to line up. So that was the dilemma that the installer was dealing with. So, okay, so there it is installed, or not installed, but it's in place, right? But this bolt hole doesn't quite line up like it, like I would like to see it. And so what he had to do was turn it like that and you can see the downward pressure that it's putting right here. And so that is what causes it to fail prematurely. So that does, that does go in there. But that's slipped down, right? See how that flexes? When I line these other bolts up better, it pushes down on that. And it would probably be a better fit if, if this slot here was filed upward. I think I'm just going to install the $32 part, see how long it lasts, and then uh, I'll assess whether or not this is all worth the extra effort for a $32 part to save it, make it last longer. See the pressure it's putting on there? And I still have to align these holes and I still need to get my ECS bracket in there. As I look at this footage, I think another candidate for filing might be the APR bracket, the triangular piece. As I shove it up in there, I can see that it could maybe be resting right against the downpipe. And if it is, then maybe I could benefit from filing just, just an eighth of an inch out of there to help it get up in there a little tighter. 
but again, it's not critical. The exhaust hanger is a $32 part. I'm going to let it ride and see how it works. So right now, this is adjusted into the highest place it can go. So you can see there's still the tension on that. And there's, there's not really anything I can do about that. And oddly enough, now that I am in here, I don't think I'm going to be able to tighten that properly. Let's find out. When I find my, once again, misplaced socket. It's not that one. I was just using it. Yeah, it is that one. How do I get them mixed up? I don't know. Yep, that's not holding. Oh, crap. I don't have a wrench that's short enough to get in there. I, I need to get another tool so I can tighten that up properly. I really thought that I was going to get to come in here and say, oh yeah, the APR downpipe makes it easier. But it kind of didn't. But maybe it did. I don't know. Uh, those of you who have done a downpipe, one of, one of these things with the factory downpipe, um, tell me, did you have to disconnect it from the turbo flange or not? Um, I can only imagine this being kind of hard to get out unless you loosen the exhaust or remove it from the flange because you have to be able to move the downpipe back to get it unseated from this, from this mount. I don't know. I've never had to do one of these before, especially not on a Mark 7. I think on my uh, on my Mark 3, I, I don't remember it being. I, I never had one fail, so uh, no, I've never replaced one of these. So I did manage to get to the store. Got me a little stubby. So let's see how well it works. All right. So I have my ground strap soldered and heat shrinked. And I had connected it up here, uh, but, but at the time I just didn't like the idea of putting it on a clamp. And so I'm going to put it here, because uh, this is electrically tied to the, to the rest of the downpipe anyway. And so uh, I'm going to put me a star locking washer. Then the bonding strap. Then a split lock washer. If I can find the ones that I brought out here, here we go. Another star washer. It's done. I'm not going to install the ECS squ uh, skid plate yet because I still need to solder my other bonding straps. I have uh, three more that I'm going to do. I appreciate you being here with me today. Let me know if you've got any questions. This has been a little bit of a kooky video. I, I, I'm curious to see what it looks like when I do the editing. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time. Take care.